Dzień dobry. E, witam Państwa na drugiej edycji webinaru Wiedza ma warstwy. Jest to właściwie już ostatni dzień, finał e, tej edycji. E, właśnie dlatego zapraszam do e, obserwowania, e, a także zapoznania się z, pozostałymi, z dwoma pozostałymi na dziś webinarami. E, no i obserwowanie naszych social mediów e, oraz strony signis.pl warstwy, ponieważ trzecia edycja już nadchodzi e, w następnym miesiącu. E, a przechodząc do tematu dzisiejszego spotkania, najpierw e, kilka e, zasad. Proszę mieć wycieszony mikrofon na czas prezentacji, e, a pytania można zadawać na czacie. E, na koniec zostaną one zebrane i zadane naszemu prelegentowi. Otóż teraz webinar będzie prowadzony w języku, w języku angielskim, także um, uh, it's nice to see everyone here um, on our webinar series Knowledge Has Layers. Um, today's guest, uh, our guest from, um, uh, from Femtika. Um, it's a great pleasure to Um, see here get with us and um, I, uh, as I know there will be two more speakers uh, with him Gabriel and Arnas. Uh, it's a um, great pleasure to see you here and to uh, hear your presentation uh, so yeah quick note for everyone please mute your microphone during the presentation and you can ask all the questions on the chat And then I will gather them and uh, ask uh, Gervinas um, all of those questions. So, and we will make like quick Q&A session. Uh, so the floor is yours. Yeah, um, thank you very much for introduction. So uh, my name is Gervinas Nemetskas. I'm technology coordinator of uh, Femtosurf uh, project. And today together with my teammates, Gabriel Skantanis and Arnes Jemaitis, We will uh, um, talk about femtosecond laser surface microstructuring. This work is under a project which is uh, funded by European funding uh, program Horizon 2020. And our project uh, name is Femtosurf. Project uh, started at 2019. It includes 10 partners from six European countries. As coordinator is Femtica company from Lithuania. Uh, Femtica is a spin-off uh, company from Vilnius University Laser Research Center, established in uh, 2013. Company specializes in uh, hybrid fabrication technologies, universal tool for using uh, femtosecond laser, laser nanofactory workstation for multi-photon polymerization, laser ablation, selective laser etching technologies, Also, Femtica offers research services in this field. Um, company is targeting for supplying the growing worldwide demands of available tools and technologies, enabling a true laser 3D uh, fabrication for custom design components in micro and sub micro scale. Uh, microstructures provided by Femtica are used in development of new future products in semiconductors, photonics, medical, automotive, space industries, and others. Um, Amphos is a laser manufacturer based in Germany, experienced in uh, high power femto and picosecond lasers. Uh, fourth is academic research, research organization Uh, Subsi, Ramted, and Heliotis are partners experienced in robotics and measurements, even in nanometer resolution. In the end user section, we have Aria, Roller Propeller, and Strauman Group, and uh, also MTC as companies from aerospace, medical, and shipbuilding applications. Because surface laser uh, structuring, structuring is uh, mostly independent of the final material, we can fabricate structures on various metals, polymers, or even glass. This opportunity allows us to have a wide range of application industries and sectors to work with such shipbuilding where anti-fouling surfaces are needed to prevent bacterial growth on, the, on ship walls. 
um, surface friction that need to be reduced between the parts of a ship and water and uh, doing so reducing the fuel consumption of ships. The fact that performances of propulsion system can be kept as original will, will have great um, impact on the overall full con consumption of a uh, threshold up to uh, 8 to 10 percent um, short shuttled maintenance will be avoided resulting in an extra reduction of cost for a ship owner. The surface properties of any medical device play a very important role in medicine at it uh, um, determine, determine uh, biocompatibility, reaction to drugs, and most importantly, for implants. Repulsion uh, or adhesion to living uh, tissue. Indeed, indeed uh, currently uh, used titanium implants play a major role in orthopedics as it allows to replace sick or damaged uh, bones. Thumbtosurf um, solution uh, would allow to directly tune uh, the properties of titanium implants, including uh, um, targeted induction of um, repulsion or adhering in the designated um, areas of the implant. Self-cleaning surfaces, um, the more sterile surfaces where bacteria could have some safety hazards, uh, wear and contamination of aviation components that are under constant stress is a major issue as it requires constant cleaning, restoration operations that are complex and costly. The surface treatment uh, developed uh, in Femtosurf will allow the covering uh, airplane or spacecraft components and surface patterns, uh, enhancing uh, their self-cleaning properties and reducing the overall friction between compon components uh, under heavy load. The main goal of this uh, project is to create a laser texturing system capable to work with large and curved surfaces as for example boat propellers which uh, size can be up to few meters and weight uh, up to few thousands kilograms. A uh, shape of boat propeller can be very curved and blades often overlaps in this way making even more difficult uh, tasks to reach all surface areas for laser structuring as almost every boat propeller is custom made according to our end user roller propellers. We will apply uh, surface uh, scanning methods to ensure best uh, texturing strategy for each use case. For high speed and effective uh, structuring, we will use high power femtosecond laser, scaling it from 20 watts average power to even two kilowatts. To efficiently use this high power of MTK constructing optical chain um, for beam delivery and manipulation. After laser structuring, machined uh, parts will be checked by using uh, integrated quality control methods to measure if induced surface features are in order limits. Also, surface structuring technology development consists of different tasks as finding reproducible geometries of super hydrophobic, super hydrophilic, um, reduced friction and wear, increase of integration sur surfaces on metals and other materials. So uh, now I would like to show you some uh, videos. One second. On the left was um, textured um, samples, which was uh, super hydrophobic. And you have been able to see that um, dirt just cannot attach to that surface. 
and on the right was uh, not textured surface, just as it is, uh, and both samples was from the same material. I will show you another one video. Yeah, uh, so um, you have been able to see the texture surfaces, which was also super hydrophobic, and the liquid just bounced off the uh, texture surface. Okay, so now I will give a word to uh, Gabrielus. He will represent uh, in more detail uh, uh, the surface texturing technology. So, Gabrielus. So, <clears throat> hello everyone. I am a researcher at Femtica, the person who is doing most of the fabrication and going in depth into how these structures are fabricated and what to expect from them. So, I will talk about how, uh, where do these structures come from and how we can try to achieve them artificially. <clears throat> so, uh, as usual with any new technology, Firstly, we try to look at nature and eventually try to mimic its behavior and its abilities. If we were to look at uh, super hydrophobic surfaces, but also the ability to have self-cleaning capability, we have to look no further <clears throat> than to the uh, known lotus leaf effect. Uh, when some droplet of water uh, touches the surface of a lotus leaf, it quickly rolls off of its surface and if the lotus leaf is also covered by any debris or uh, dust, the water droplets, uh, so to say, pick those uh, dusts to with itself and roll off together, exhibiting self-cleaning properties. This is achieved by the lotus leaf by having very small surface structures on the surface of the leaf itself. They usually are of hierarchical structure, meaning there are two different uh, spatial scales to them you have the, so to say, micro scale pillars that are also covered by various nanoscale rod or some uh, hair-like structures on top of them that allow you to have multiple air gaps and reduce the final contacting area between the lotus leaf and the water droplet. So, uh, while trying to replicate these types of structures, on various materials because lasers allow us to be quite material independent in achieving these various structures. Well, we have to look at the most prominent theoretical models of how light and matter interacts with one another. Well, the starting interaction is without a doubt energy absorption. If the material doesn't take in the energy introduced by light, you have no interaction, no manipulation of the material at all. So the initial part is energy absorption. The prominent model is a two temperature model uh, where we have very hot initial electron gas that then translates its energy to the final lattice of the material that we want to modify. So the second effect that happens is you have electron excitation. The first part of the material that interacts with light is the electrons themselves. Uh, from other theoretical research and experimental measurements, it is usually stated that electron excitation and the energy absorption is instantaneous. Happens in the femtosecond scale, if not even faster. So you, so you abruptly create a very high amount of free electrons, especially in metals that already have a lot of them, but are, that are very hot and they begin to thermalize. That is, they begin to interact with one another on the femtosecond scale and reach very high temperatures. Then eventually you have heat transfer component 
and electron lattice thermalization. What this means is that the electrons on the picosecond scale, which is now much longer than the ultra short pulse that we use for these types of fabrications, start to finally interact with the lattice of the material itself and transfer the energy to it by the help of phonons and other kinetic inter interactions. What this happens is that eventually you start creating temperature gradients on the material itself. Some parts of it become hotter than others uh, and start interacting with one another. When the time scales become even larger on the nanosecond scale, hydrodynamical component takes effect and you have thermodynamical effects and you actually have the movement, the melting and the convection of the entire material. So in order uh, to gain these very small structures, we abuse the fact of these ultra short laser pulse fast interactions, the quick uh, surface melting of the material and fast resolidification that allows us to create periodic structures. This initially happens from non-homogeneous absorption. Even where, when you have linearly polarized light, so to say, the surface is still not ideally flat. It's not optically flat. Uh, you have some surface roughness on top of it, which has some other scattering effects uh, and causing some non-linear, uh, non-homogeneous absorption. Some parts of the metal are absorbed more. They heat up more faster than other parts. Uh, then also on top of that, uh, metals that have a lot of free carriers try to block the incoming radiation and uh, re-emit uh, some radiation back from the surface in scattered, uh, so to say, radiation, which induces in the interference because the light is still coherent. So we have the initial impinging light and the reflected light from the free electrons that interfere with one another and start creating periodic patterns on a similar uh, length scale as the laser uh, radiation that you shined upon it. So then you have uh, this growing effect of interfering light uh, that starts finally melting the final material. Then of course, uh, because you have an interference pattern, you have a periodic intensity distribution. Some of it is hotter. So you have those uh, reddish uh, higher temperature regions. Some of them is colder. Because it is uh, sort of melted, you have this liquid material that's and that undergoes what is now mostly known as Marangani conven convection and certain hydrothermal waves. These waves go from hotter to colder areas and they start mixing by creating these convectional currents that eventually start growing upwards from the material, causing the surf, uh, surface periodic structures to grow on top of each other. During some uh, uh, theoretical calculations and modeling, you can even predict by looking at the Marangoni number and fighting, finding the local minimums, what would be the final spatial period of these types of structures. So if you were to look at a stand, uh, went too far look at the uh, standard uh, laser irradiations. The standard beam shape is Gaussian, which means you have an, a lateral intensity distribution. You have the highest intensity in the center of the beam, and you have lower intensity at the sides of the beam, which means that you have different fluencies going uh, radially from the center spot. If you impinge one uh, point of the material surface by, by a Gaussian beam repeatedly by keeping and increasing the fluence, you start seeing different structures emerging. At the center, uh, at the side, so to say, where the fluency is lowest and uh, by also using, let's say, very few amount of uh, laser pulses, you start creating those initial ripple structures from the initial interference between the laser light and the free electron uh, re-scattered light. By uh, keeping on increasing uh, the fluence, you start growing larger micro groove structures 
which are more uh, of a hydrodynamical effect that starts growing larger and grows upwards. If you keep on increasing the laser fluence, which happens at the center of the Gaussian beam or even at the sides by keep, keeping on increasing the pulse number, you start growing certain micro columns and micro spikes in the center. The same way uh, that this effect happens in a single spot by shining continuous pulses happens in a similar fashion when you're scanning the laser beam through the sample surface, which allows you to cover uh, entire areas of the sample surface, allowing you to actually functionalize it. So again, you see four uh, scanning electron microscope images with different fluencies. These are either by having multiple repeated scans, which increase the effective number of pulse pulses that impinged on the sample surface, or by in increasing the uh, initial laser average power, which increases the energy fluence, also known as the energy density, or the total amount of photons that impinge the, the laser surface. So again, by scanning this, you get the initial ripple patterns, those very small, fine structures, then because you're using a Gaussian beam in the central part, you're starting to see growing uh, grooves or micro column structures that keep increasing in size and joining together with increasing fluence. So then what it eventually boils down to is that the dominant parameters of the final structure that you gain are determined by the peak fluence, the energy density, and the number of pulses that effectively impinged on any one point of area. And uh, by creating this map, you can predict what type of structures you would get. So if we were to look back at the lotus leaf, the one that has exhibited hierarchical uh, surface topography and allowed it to exhibit self-cleaning and hydrophobic properties, the ideal goal would have it would have these micro columns those spikes that appear from higher fluence and high number of pulses that are also covered by those initial ripples on top that give you the the very fine structures so those are the so to say aimed for laser parameters to go for so when you're creating these types of structures then you want to measure to know if you achieved what you wanted it with water droplets and superhydrophobicity, it's very simple to see the result visually. You've already seen a few images uh, and videos of showing how hydrophobicity acts and behaves on the sample surface. So the measured parameter is called the static contact angle. You basically measure the uh, angles of, of how, because of water tension, what shape bubble is formed on the sample surface. When you have uh, a very hydrophilic um, sample, the water droplet spreads across the sample surface, creating very small contact angles uh, between the metal surface and the water droplet. When it is at 90 degrees, it is known as, such a, so say, the boundary condition be, between the hydrophilic and hydrophobic samples. And when it is above 90, it is considered a hydrophobic surface. When it exceeds 160 degrees, if you were to look at the theta advanced or receding angles, it is now considered a super hydrophobic surface. The so the idea is to have a much larger uh, contact angle uh, value. Then you have various types of hydrophobic samples. You can have a very high angle, but it will still behave differently. So these are known different hydrophobic states. One of them is known as the Wenzel state. The other one is a Cassia-Baxter state, and there are, there are various other ones. They act differently. Uh, in one way, it is known as a contact angle hysteresis, which means is if you would were to tilt your sample slightly and uh, drop water droplets, at what angle would the water droplets start rolling from the sample? And again, if you would have dust, it would exhibit self-cleaning properties. So again, a much smaller angle would be more preferred. The, so the structure that exhibits these type of angles is known as a Cassia-Baxter state, which as visualized uh, in the slides, 
exhibit uh, air gaps between the final sur surface and the liquid droplet. These are achieved by having these hierarchical structures, whereas the Wenzel state is usually uh, from those larger microstructures without the hierarchical law structures on top of them. So again, different types of uh, hydrophobic or hydrophilic structures are useful. You can have a hydrophilic, it is still finds its own applications. So for hydrophobic, we could have enhanced cell cleaning properties, lower possibility of microbe growth on surface, possible anti-icing applications. For hydrophilic, we could have better water distribution along the surface because it likes to spread. You have less surface tension taking over it. You can have directional wetting and even uh, usefulness for water-based paint adhesion. So if we're trying to compare a few different samples, as mentioned before, when you have these very uh, microsurfaces, which are also covered by nanoscale ripples, you exhibit more hydrophobic properties, where if you have microstructures with very few nanostructures and some deeper grooves, you, get, you could even achieve uh, hydrophilic properties. What also became apparent during experiments is that not only the laser structuring and the surface topography, uh, topography changes uh, create surface functionalization, but chemical effects and surface chemistry play a major role on it as well. What initially happens after fabrication, every structure initially becomes hydrophilic, even if you wanted to achieve hydrophobic surfaces. This happens to the fact that after laser radiation, usually you have a lot of uncompensated charges. You have a very energetic uh, surface. So to say it has a lot of free energy potential. The Gibbs free energy is very high because of that, Polar molecules, such as water, like to adhere to it very much. Therefore, it exhibits hydrophilicity. After some days of keeping it in air, even some other atmospheres, or encasing them in polystyrene or polyethylene boxes, they, uh, these samples begin to age, and their contact angle measurements, the hydrophobicity, begins to emerge, and the contact angle increases. By looking at the surface chemistry, it is apparent that uh, what initially happens is you lose all of the organic molecules, which are usually uh, nonpolar, which likes to repel water, and you sometimes have uh, an increase in oxygen, uncompensated oxygen and ions, which are more polar and again really like water. So you, uh, for aluminum cases, you create what are known as Lewis acids, and these acids eventually passivate themselves by actually adhering more water vapor from the air, which looks counterintuitive. You're trying to create a hydrophobic surface, and yes, and yet after laser fabrication, it becomes hydrophobic by actually collecting water vapor from the air after fabrication and eventually re. Uh, re-adhering some non-polar uh, organic molecules, which are visualized as the hydrophobic sample eventually has an increase of carbon content on the sample surface. So going to another uh, type of structuring, you have the antifouling and antimicrobial. You, there are various ways of achieving these types of struct, uh, structures by having static repulsion, low surface energy, electrostatic repulsion, some drug, active drug releases, or even contact killing by having very spiky topography. Usually, the, the antimicrobial surfaces are based on attachment point theory. If you have a surface covered with very fine structure that are of smaller spatial periods than the microbe itself, you have much fewer attachment points for the bacteria to adhere to the surface, and it is less likely to create colonies and like the surface, the, rendering the surface more antimicrobial. Usually they go hand in hand with uh, super hydrophobic surfaces. And also, if you were to look at the antifouling low surface energy, as I mentioned before, entry, uh, super hydrophobic surfaces ex experience low surface energy due to the passivation. So they go hand in hand. 
Usually these types of structures are, again, created hierarchically, usually by multiple scans, having that large effective number of pulses by creating these larger scale micro uh, structures that you see in the SEM uh, image covered by these very fine structures that actually, actually reduce the attachment points for the final uh, antimicrobial effect. Another type uh, of functionalization is uh, paint adhesion, where we go to the opposite side of the spectrum. Now we aim towards hydrophilicity. We want for the paint or any other covering material to spread across the surface, adhere to it more strongly that it would not chip off or flake away uh, in the long term. So again, by creating those large channels without the nanostructure on top of it, we could create uh, various hydrophilic properties that, that could eventually reduce the amount of paint needed to cover a certain area of material with required surface finish. So another type of property is for friction wear manipulation, which is very sought, off, sought after in the machining and heavy industry. Uh, these are not entirely based on the in induced surface structures that we went, went through so far, but they're more based on the simple ablation processes where femtosecond uh, lasers abuse the fact that we have mu uh, much fewer recast and remelted layers, which allows us to create much smoother surfaces with much finer uh, holes on top of them. Another group, so the initial or the main, uh, so to say, structures that are fabricated are dimpled structures or various grooved channels, which uh, acts in two ways. It reduces the final contacting area between the two joining surfaces, reducing the effective friction, and also in wet uh, friction um, situations where you have lubricant in between the two sample surfaces. The, these surface structures act as certain guiding channels and reservoirs for the lubricant to be placed in. If any abrasive material is being created or chipped off, uh, chipped off from the joining surfaces, they could even be expelled or trapped inside these microstructures, again, preserving the material longevity. By doing uh, tests on stainless steel, uh, we saw that we had a very good uh, six-fold incre uh, increase in reduction of the friction coefficient on stainless steel from dimpled uh, structure to just simple polished initial stainless steel structure. So this type of uh, surface functionalization looks really promising in the heavy industry and the longevity of various parts. Another field, another medical field is known as OSEA integration, which is the direct attachment of connection uh, tissue, bone tissue, from the organic human body part to the inorganic, so to say, uh, metallic part of the implant itself. With this technology, we aim to uh, increase the bone uh, implant connection strength between the implant and the human body part itself, decrease the chance of withdrawal and decrease chance of in inflammation. Also in trying to reduce the total time required for the healing process uh, to occur and final implantation to be so to say, secured and fixed in place. These are done in a similar fashion, but again, now we're going to a different side than with antimicrobial. Right now we want more attachments, so we want to create channels uh, which are larger than the final bacteria the, or the osseous material, the bone material that will adhere to the surface, to align themselves along the surface and actually like it, to create multiple attachment points for it, and even create guiding channels to orient them in the way that would increase the connection strength and uh, reduce the time needed for good osseous integration. So these types of structures are more smoothed out, but have more larger uh, protrusions on top of it. So again, uh, 
because it is a medical application, uh, surface chemistry composition need to be checked to see if we don't introduce any unwanted material on the sample surface that would uh, create this, make the surface less biocompatible and make them unusable for medical applications. So again, in these types of situations, we create elongated channels that act as guide guidelines for the osseous material to grow and align themselves to. So that was the end of my part. Uh, right now we will try to play another video for you where Arna Jametis will demonstrate how these technologies are implemented in practice. So I will try to stop screen sharing and Google us now.
I'm going to search this now. Okay, um, so thank you very much for your attention. Now we are open for your questions. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us and that whole uh, showing the whole process. That was uh, very interesting. Um, so yeah, everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, you can ask uh, questions on the chat if you have like a really specific one. Uh, you can also write on the chat that you want to um, take the voice, and then you can uh, launch your microphone and just ask it like live. And also, if um, um, now uh, there is no question i think uh you can write uh, the email with your questions uh to um to us to signalies uh, and or uh, directly to uh get and, uh, and, uh, and all the speakers uh and i think they will uh, also answer your questions um and now, if um, there are no questions now, um, I just want to thank you very much uh, for being here, uh, for uh, sharing everything, uh, sharing your knowledge. Um, also, I want to thank everyone uh, who attended this attended this webinar, and um, mm, want to invite everyone to. Uh, Observe our our social media uh, because um, we're coming soon with the third edition of uh, our webinars. Knowledge has layers, uh, so yeah, stay tuned uh, and see you uh, on the next meeting. I guess. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Bye.